unfortunately, the past two weeks, almost two weeks, have been a very, very, very difficult time for the Jewish people. Different people look at it differently and different, we, you know, we have questions. We have questions. So before I even jump into any of those questions, I want to talk about what does faith look like? And maybe it's just me, but I think that very often when we think of faith, we think of, you know, these holy people, these holy men, these holy ra um, um, men with long white beards or these holy rabbitsons that no matter what happens, it's like it's all for the good, it's all from God and everything is great and, you know, they're, they're always feeling grateful and fe feeling blessed. That is not a reality, right? And I don't, you know, a lot of times when we read um, um, stories about faith, about or we hear people talk about faith, you know, when they when they talk about like, I I, I believed or I prayed and then it came, it came to be, we're missing a big part of the picture. And I think, I think it's inaccurate. I think a, a much more accurate talk, uh, look at what faith is, is faith is actually a relationship, right? Now, I'm going to go out on an assumption here and assume that every single one of you who's, join, who's joining or listening to it has been in a relationship. Right now, if you've been in a relationship, you'll know that there are times when it's um, times where things are great. You're getting on, you're enjoying each other's company, you're getting along well. And there are things where it's more rocky. Right. Maybe you and the other person are going through your own stresses or maybe you haven't slept enough or maybe you haven't had a coffee yet or whatever it is. Right. And there are times when the relationship is much more rocky. Right now, when we hit a rough patch in a relationship, when the relationship is a good relationship, right, whether it's um, a spouse or whether it's a relationship with a good friend or it's whether it's a relationship with our children or our, or our parents or whatever it is, when it's a good relationship, we don't give up on the relationship just because we're in we're in a rough patch. Right. We keep that relationship going. We have to, we, we, you know, we have to, we have to, we may have to do things. We may have to spend more time together. We may have to talk things through. We may even have to go to a mediator. We may have to go um, to, to, um, to, to some, you know, to, to outside help to figure out what's going on. But we don't give up on the relationship because we've hit a bad patch. And that is how we have to think about our faith. Right. Our faith in God is not this thing that we just believe everything is great. Everything is wonderful. And it's you know, if I had faith, it's it's all good. Right. We have to know that it's going. To, it's like a relationship. It's real for it to be real. There are going to be times where it's easier. Right. If you've ever had that experience in life where things have worked out right that then 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 you'll know that wow i noticed it right i remember um i remember a few years ago when we moved to manchester and um we 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 i'm just going to say hello to everyone that is saying hi to me i can see so many people from around the world um close people to me um i'm just going to give everyone a shout out from Denver and London and from Vancouver and from from Calgary and um, Manchester and where else have we got Amsterdam and um, I'm sure I'm missing I'm, I'm missing some people out but um, 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 from from New York as well it's great to have so many dear friends Dubai uh, um, um, so it, it's, it's great to have so many dear friends on this doing this together. So, well, yeah, so what I wanted to, 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 to say is that, um, from Jerusalem as well, of course, hi to people from Jerusalem too. And so going back to faith, right? So the times when things work out, when everything slots into place, it's so easy to tap mm -hmm. into that faith, right? For example, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a story that happened to me from my own, my own life, right? So six years ago, we were living in Vancouver and for various personal reasons, 
we decided that the right move for our family was to move from Vancouver to the UK, back to the UK. And it was not an easy decision for us at all because we had lived in Vancouver for six years. We were really, really loved the community there. And, um, but our personal circumstances and our personal situation meant that it was time for us to move on. And when we made that decision to move on and move back to the UK, at the time we didn't have a job. Now, if you can imagine getting into that headspace of moving with a, with a larger family, um, without knowing what the job was going to be, it's, it's a very, it was a very frightening time. It was a very like, what's going to be, what's going to be. We moved to, to the UK and within, thank God, within a couple of, of, um, within a month or so, we found jobs. And at that moment, when we found the jobs, it was so easy to kind of feel like, wow, you know, God is looking out for me and God is, um, um, God is there for me and he's protecting my family. And, you know, it was a hard decision to make. And together with our mentors, we had made the right decision um, for our family. And it was, it was fantastic to see that, right? There are other times in my, in, in my life and, and it could be um, for all of us. Where we, where, where, where we don't see that, right? We see the darkness, right? And in those times, it's not so easy to have that faith in God, right? And I want to say something that if you have ever been through a time like that, or if you're currently going through a time like, like, like that, where you're feeling like, how could this happen? How could this happen to our Jewish brothers and sisters? Right? How could such a terrible calamity, such a terrible tragedy happen? And I know for some of us on this call, it hits a lot closer to home, right? You are in good company. What do I mean by that? King David, King David, who we're told was so connected to God, right? He had such incredible faith. He wrote what the Tehillim, the Psalms that carry us through. And by the way, they are beautiful. Like if you ever, if you ever want to connect to um, something during a difficult time, um, the Psalms are amazing. They're beautiful. They talk of God's, of, of David's faith in God and how um, <coughs> David, David um, sees God in everything, right? And connects to God and talks to God. And you know what King David says? At one point he says, he says, Hashem, God, why have you forsaken me? Right? Now, what is he saying here? Right? King David is saying that, <coughs> he's saying that from my perspective, Hashem, from my perspective, God, it feels like you have abandoned me. You have forsaken me. Right? Now, if King David could have felt like that, then no that it's okay to feel like that, right? And know that that when we feel like that, it's a normal thing. It doesn't mean necessarily that we don't have faith. <coughs> Sorry, hold on just a second. Sorry about that, right? <coughs> so, but we, what we have to understand is that there are gonna be times, <coughs> apologies, I'm just gonna take another drink so I can clear my throat. Absolutely, Catherine, who's, said, who's, uh, who's asking the question, who's saying that in Judaism, we can question God. You're right. And, and again, that is the relationship part of it, right? That when, God, when King David felt like, God, you have abandoned me, right? When King David felt totally alone and he felt like God had abandoned him, what did he do at that point? He didn't walk away from the relationship. He went back into the relationship and said and spoke to God. And said to God, why, why do you, why have you abandoned me? And I think this is the paradigm for it, right? This is the, <clears throat> this is what King David is telling us is to do, is that faith doesn't mean we don't have questions. Faith doesn't mean we don't feel the dark times, right? We're supposed to, we're supposed to feel, right? Hashem, God has created us with emotions right? Those emotions that we feel. And as someone correctly um, said, um, that when one Jew is hurting, we're supposed to hurt for them. When so many Jews around in Israel and around the world are hurting, we're supposed to hurt for them. It's not a lack of faith to, um, 
to to feel that hurt and to feel that that darkness and to feel like you know god where is god in all this right but then we have to kind of figure out what do we do and and i think there's there's two things that i want i want to share with you first about this the first thing is is that number one we have to go back to that the idea again and again that this is a relationship right and faith in order for faith to be real it's a relationship which means there are ups and there are downs there are going to be times where we feel more connected and there are going to be times where it's harder for us right but it's a relationship so it doesn't mean when i feel you know um um that where is where is god in all this i walk away from it it means i turn back into that relationship right it's kind of like you know you 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 have someone who's up, you you're, you have a relationship with someone and your something happens right we talk about it we work things through we don't just walk away from the relationships because something because something because something happens right think about king david who had such faith turning to god and saying god why have you abandoned me right it's okay to say god this is so hard for us why or what we're going to talk about the why thing um, um later and, and and what we can do the second thing that i want to share about is and i'm going to give you an analogy to kind of help help it come come clearer to us now is that there's there's always two perspectives right if you're using the if we're, if we're talking about it as a relationship there's always two perspectives right there's god's perspective and there's our, our perspective. And one of the ways that is really resonates for me to explain it is that if, as, if anyone if anyone on the call has either had children or seen children interact with parents, you'll see you'll see something that, that's quite common, right? Um, and this happens all the time in my house, right? You have you have I have, thank God, young kids, um, and if I give my young kids something. I'm the best mummy in the whole world, right? I make them a dinner that they enjoy. I'm the best mother in the whole world, right? I give them a chocolate bar. I'm the best mother in the whole world. I do something that they like. I'm the best mother and they love me and everything's great. And then it could be, and it could be like within a short space of time, right? I tell them, okay, time to brush our teeth. And all of a sudden it's like, you're so mean. Or I tell them it's time to get out of bed and get ready for school and it's like, you are the me you know like you're like how could you be so me right as adults as mature adults when we look at this sort of situation we can smile about it why because from the child's point of view they're living in the moment right and when the mother when when the parent right or the adult is giving them a treat it feels like wow this parent is is doing it you know this adult is in their life is doing it because they love me and they want to give me good stuff right and when they're brushing their teeth all they focus on all the child focuses on i don't like how this feels right now right this is uncomfortable for me but we as adults know that a parent who cares about their child an adult who cares about this child is going to insist that this child brushes their teeth why? Because they care about the child. And sometimes when we care about ourselves, right, we care about other people, we have to do some th things that are uncomfortable, right? We have to do things that are uncomfortable. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I, I shared in when, when I gave a class on, on self-care is that discipline is the highest form of self-care that discipline is the highest form of, of, of love right and we as, as adults right as mature adults looking at that child can can recognize two things that number one the parent who is making a delicious dinner for the child is this is coming from the same place of love as the parent who is saying time to go to sleep time to brush your teeth right it's coming from a place of love that's number one that we can recognize that it's all coming from the same place of love and the second thing we can recognize is that that yeah the child feels the you know we're, we're not going to take it so seriously when the child turns around and says like oh my goodness you're the meanest parent ever because you're making me brush my teeth because we recognize okay you know you have the child has um less understanding the child has um 
the child the child the child it feels uncomfortable for them right so we can understand those th two things we have to bring it back to our relationship with god right in our relationship with god we are like the the child and and this is a, a bigger discussion i'm happy to to do another 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 class on this if people want to know but for, for the purposes on this class what we what we what we want to know is that what we want to take as 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 knowledge and and there is a way to understand that it's it's a deeper class um it's a deeper discussion for another time is that god didn't have to create the world right god created the world from a place of loving kindness and goodness right now when we understand that we understand that what god does for us is coming from a place of love there are times where we feel that right we feel that in our lives and it can happen in small places right you know you apply for a job and you get it or you you're you you going somewhere and you're running a bit late and and you hit every single green light right you feel the love right and there are times where we don't feel it right that's our perspective but from Hashem, from God's perspective, it's all coming from a place of love, right? We have to know it. We have to know it. And again, there are ways that you can look into it and learn and learn how, how to do it. So you come to a place of knowledge about this. But then there's a second step, okay? And that is, there are going to be times where we feel the darkness, right? And uh, and we feel like, you know, what's going on here, right? Just like King, King David said, God, why have you forsaken me, right? Hashem, but we, 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 have to, we have to know that it's coming from an art. But what do we have to do? So here's where faith comes in. And here is um, where the, the, um, the knowledge, where, 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 it's, where English does a disservice to the, to the, the word the words right translations because sometimes things get lost in translation so the hebrew word for for faith does anyone know is emuna right we translate it as faith but it actually means something different we see this in the torah when king um when abraham abraham was being tested he um um at, at, during he passed his test and then god says now i know that you are an ish ne em man, right? Now, a, a, a preliminary look at it would translate it as a man of faith. Hold on a second, right? Abraham, Abraham knew God from, from when he was really, 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 really little, right? Why does he have to get um, tested so many times um, for him, for, for, for Hashem, for God to finally say, you're a man of faith, right? Mm -hmm. so, so it's not a man of faith that he's called. He's called Ne'eman, Ish Ne'eman, which means a man of loyalty, right? Now, the difference between faith and loyalty is immense. What, what's the difference? It's very easy to believe. It's very easy to believe in something, right? I'll give you a silly example. It's very, pe most people believe that smoking cigarettes is bad for you, right? Not everyone doesn't smoke. Right? Most people believe that it's good to get a good night's sleep. Very few people actually do it. Why? Because the, the nature of the human condition is that we can believe something, we can know something, and yet we, we, can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can struggle with it, right? The, the, the challenge isn't always just in the, in the belief. It's in being loyal to that knowledge. And this was Abraham's greatness right? Um, that not only did he believe in God, but he was loyal to that knowledge when, when, um, when, when times got tough, right? When he was t challenged and tested. And that is our job. That is our job as Jews. And that is our, our job right now, right? Is that, yes, it feels dark. It feels like, why? What on earth is going on, right? We have to know that everything is coming from, from Hashem. And even when it feels hard, we have to be loyal to that knowledge. We can acknowledge that it feels hard, right? And we can turn, we, we'll talk about practically what we do with that. 
but with the loyalty, the, the, the faith, the, the emuna, the, the, the Hebrew word for it, the emuna that is required us from us at this point is, is, the, is, the, is the loyalty to that knowledge, right? That, that loyalty to that knowledge, which, which helps keep us in the relationship, okay? So to sum up what we've done so far, and we're going to take it practically um, 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 further, is that we said that faith, right, isn't really faith, it's loyalty, right? It's having that knowledge that everything is, that Hashem does, everything that God does, comes from a place of love right and then through that dark times we have to have the loyalty to stay in that relationship just like king david turned around to hashem and said god you why have you forsaken me right the, which is not saying that god you've forsaken me but it's saying that this is how i feel i feel right now that you have forsaken me and it's okay for us to turn around to hashem it's good for us to to have that relationship to talk to hashem to pray to hashem to express what we're going through um, to Hashem. Hashem has big shoulders, right? God has big shoulders. He can carry what we are going through and we can we, we can be in that relationship with it. Practically speaking, and I want to use the analogy from, from that relationship, from the relationship to, to do it. Practically speaking, I think there is a difference between being in a situation and being post a situation, right? And for... All of us, I think, right now, we are still in that relationship, right? And I think it's very common and it's very normal for us to kind of feel like, what, you know, um, um, why? Why is that kind of um, happening, right? We, we, we feel like, you know, we want, we are, we're asking, like, why? Why is, why is, why is God doing this um, to, to us? But it's not a very helpful question. A much more helpful question and again this comes from the hebrew the hebrew word as well is the the hebrew word for why is lama right if something terrible happens and we say lama but the hebrew word lama can actually be split in up into la and ma to what right a much healthier question for us to ask right now is what is my response right because we may never understand why right and again this goes into our relationship with god and our understanding that god is much greater than me if we understood every single thing that god did that would mean that god is no greater than me right then you know um god is, is infinitely greater than me and that we, we we may never understand why things happen but we can ask the question and we should ask the question of what is my response to it and I think, you know, unfortunately, fortunately, however you want to say it, so often we see, and I'm, I want to make it very clear, I'm not suggesting for any point, I'm not, it's not I, I'm way beyond my grade, um, 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 pay grade, right, um, um, to say, but I'm not suggesting this is why things happen, right? But so, so often, so often um, we see that, people who go through difficulties they grow right even look at it look how how we're coming together as a jewish people now right and again i'm not suggesting for a moment that i know that this is why it's happened we needed to get together it's it's way beyond my pay grade especially since this is a is a free class right so um, um it's way way beyond my, my my pay grade to do it but we can still acknowledge that look at the good that's come out of it, right? We are connected, right? So connected towards each other, right? We, the difference is we're putting them aside. We're coming together. We are coming together in a way that different things. You know, I've seen, I'm sure, I'm sure everyone has the, 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 the stories that they've seen of how people are coming together and people are helping out. And, you know, we could see, things right so the question that we have to ask ourselves is what what can i do what is my response to, going to be to, to do to be to what's going on and i want to say something also is that the physical world generally is a 
an analogy to the spiritual world, right? If, if we understood the physical world really, really, really well, we would get a deeper understanding of how the spiritual world works. One of the examples of that is the ecosystem, right? What, you know, we, the, the world is an ecosystem and we do not understand it. However, there is an ecosystem and we see this when most clearly when we mess with that ecosystem, right? What do I mean by that is, for example, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but like, they t you know, if a certain little fly becomes extinct in, in a rainforest somewhere, it's just a little fly, but it affects the whole ecosystem, right? And you've seen it again and again, you can Google it afterwards, right? But it's, it's, we don't necessarily understand it. We don't understand what's going to happen. And very often we don't understand, you know, when we import certain species or we, 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 we change the ecosystem, we don't understand what the knock-on effects are going to be. The same thing is in the spiritual world, right? That there is a spiritual ecosystem to, to the world, right? That what we do spiritually has an effect and this war that we are fighting right now in israel is a war that is being fought on two fronts it's being fought physically by the by the idf and it's being fought um, spiritually by every single one of us um i, I was listening i was listening to a a, a, a good friend of mine showed me a video um, yesterday and of, of an IDF soldier and he was saying that 70 years ago his grandmother was in was in the Holocaust and um, he said the difference between and, and he, you know he said her whole unfortunately her whole family was wiped out and he said the difference between 70 you know 70 years ago when his grandmother was in the Holocaust and now is that we have the IDF and now you know when we're going to say never you know and never again we are going to fight and i turned to my friend who is not a religious person very spiritual not a religious person and i said to her do you like what do you think of it do you, do you believe it do you agree with it and we both kind of felt like no and I, and i'll tell you why i kind of felt like no is because it, i saw this video yesterday about 10 days after the worst, the worst, let's call it a pogrom against Jews in Israel since the Holocaust, right? The most, the most number of, of, of people that were killed in, in, a, in an incident in, um, um, in one day since the Holocaust, right? And that's with the IDF. And the IDF is an amazing, amazing, amazing force. We are lucky to have them to, to defend ourselves. However, we have to also understand that there is a God, right? And that there, there is a spiritual ecosystem too. And with that is that the, the IDF is out there, they're fighting on the, on, the, on the front lines and whatever we could do to support them, fantastic. But there's a, the war is being fought on a second front too. And that is on the spiritual front. And every single one of us, every single one of us is in that is drafted in that army and how do we fight that war that is <coughs> is is by 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 the spirituality by the mitzvot by the things that we learn by the by the kindness that we do to others like i heard something yesterday which was so beautiful right like a, and and it, and it's and it struck me i met i met someone um, yesterday and she was saying you know i didn't know what to do so what did i do i've got some israeli friends and i offered she lives in denver I offered to babysit for them, right? Like, how beautiful is that? <coughs> it's a small thing to help someone else. It's a big thing, actually, to babysit someone else's kids. It's a big thing. And it's so thoughtful. And it's also a mitzvah. And that, I think, is, is, is what we have to ask ourselves at this point, is what is my response going to be? Yes, it's a war that's physically being fought in Israel by the IDF. But it's a war that every single one of us are part of and is being fought by every single one of us spiritually as well. And that's something to kind of tap into at this moment and kind of say to ourselves, what can I do to increase 
the good in this world, to support others that are suffering, to support others that are going through it, and to feed into the spiritual ecosystem and to increase the mitzvahs in this world. And please, God, we should see peace. Those people that have been hurt should have healing. Those who have lost loved ones should be comforted and we should have you know some sort of comfort peace security in israel and um, around the world i'm going to open it up to questions now if anyone would like to ask any questions or anyone would like to share any comments i know there are some people that have shared comments um throughout you're welcome to drop them in again and um, i'm going to quickly look through them as, as well but feel free if you're on zoom to unmute yourself and kind of just um, ask your questions say your comments but i'd love to hear from you um Let's we, let's make this. T tell me what's what's um, what's helped you, or if you want to share anything, if you have any questions, any comments. And I'm going to quickly look through the comments that have already been um, put in. Um, shalom to everyone. Yes, definitely affects us all. And I'm going to look through the comments here. And again, feel free to to ask any questions if anyone has any questions. Let's see if what the comments are on Instagram. Um, whoops, sorry. God, yes, everything is from God, even if we can't understand the why. It's a hundred percent true, right? And 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 I would add, it's coming from that place of of goodness, right? even if we do not understand why it's why why it is and, and a lot of times we don't understand um okay if anyone else has any questions you're more than welcome to ask them it's a time for Am Yisrael, for the jewish people to unite and know beyond um um beyond a reasonable doubt that hashem is with us in um, in this darkness, Hashem is our light. Why does bad thing happen to other Jewish people in the Holy Land? It's a very good question. And again, I think at this point, we don't know. We, and we, 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 we're not, again, there's two phases. There was two phases of Jewish history. There's the phase of Jewish history that we had until the temple where we have prophets and we could turn to them and we could ask the prophets, why is God sending it to us? And the prophets would communicate to us and say, this is what you need to do. We're now in a phase of Jewish history where we do not have prophets, right? Where we do not have people that have that close communication with God and are able to know why this, this, um, 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 why this has happened. The only thing that we can sort of say at this point is, what is my response going to be? How am I going to bring um, um, good into this world at this point? Um, thank you. This has been wonderful. Another session would be great. I'm very, very happy to do another session. Um, you can feel free to tell me. Um, um, you can tell me if, you, if there's any particular questions that you'd like to ask, then... Um, then then topics you'd like me to address you can you can let me know you can put it in here or or um or just message me afterwards right so when we learn about the horrific treatment of the hostages what is our response how do you relate to Hashem when there's currently something so horrifying going on right now and I have another question over here that how can we believe that the trustees are coming from God's good okay so there's there's two things that we have to understand okay is that there's there's the intellectual part of it and there's the emotional part of it right and intellectually we have to understand the how how god we have to understand a few things right we have to understand that there is a god and you have to look into it and, and find out how that you know that there is a god we have to understand why god created the world right and all these kind of pieces help us come to an intellectual understanding that of of god as a god who loves us right now again when we are in something it's possibly not the best time to do it right because 
that there's a difference in, um, for anyone that listened to my podcast last week, my episode with, with the rabbi from, from, from Jerusalem, one of the things that he said was comfort. What comfort means is, is a change in perspective. Now, when someone's going through a difficulty, it's not the right time to change perspective, right? Sometimes we have to, we're going through it. At the end of it, and he shared, he shared some stories of people that, right, when a person's through it, when time has passed, right, when they've processed what they've gone through, then we can sort of look at changing perspectives, right? So how, how can we believe that the atrocities are coming from God's good is a question that you kind of have to look at. Why did God create the world, right? What was in it for God to, for God to create the world, right? What's the purpose of, of us being in this world, right? What, why? What, what's the purpose of this world? And all that can help, help us understand that intellectually, and I can understand, I can almost like separate those two parts. Intellectually, yeah, I can understand that, that there is a God who created the world to give us good and, and who does everything in order for us to do good. We also have to at the same time acknowledge that we are going through um, a very, very, very difficult time, right? And we are like that child whose parent is insisting that they brush their teeth, right? You can talk, and trust me, I've done this, right? I made this mistake, right? Is is of, of telling my child at the time when I'm brushing their teeth, but this is for your good, you know? Tell you, you tell me how effective that is, and I tell them. But your teeth is gonna is is it, you know it's, it's it's very important for you for your teeth to to be strong, etc., etc. And you could get cavities, etc. Doesn't go in. It doesn't go in. All I could do at that moment as a parent is empathize with my child. I know, I know you hate how it feels when we brush our teeth. And at a different time, when they've calmed down, we can chat about the importance of dental hygiene. Right in the moment, kid can't hear. And we can acknowledge that we are like that child right now. We're in a moment and we can be empathetic with ourselves and recognize that it's really, really hard, right? It's, if we can have that faith, beautiful, well done. If it's hard, recognize even King David had moments like that, right? What did King David, what was his greatness? Is that he had that loyalty that he turned to God and said, God, why? Why have you forsaken me? This is how I feel. And we can turn to God as well with our pain and say, our brothers and sisters are suffering, right? Make it end. Bring peace, right? Just pray to God. And that prayer coming from our emotions is, is so powerful and so beautiful. Please, God, this will, war will be over soon. And then we can look at, you know, how do we understand and all that? But for right now, I think it's about that empathy with ourselves and that understanding and that staying in that relationship with God, right? Staying in that relationship with God, right? Turning, taking our emotions, turning it to God, turning it into prayer, turning it into to good, good deeds. Um, I hope that's a little bit helpful. <laughs> I've got some more questions here. Um, um, how can we teach our kids that we can fight this war from abroad with chesed, tefillah and tehillim? That is a great question, Karen. Um, and I'm, I'm going to say um, um, that we teach our kids by how we, how we respond, right? So, so just like for ourselves, right? We, and, and, and some of these concepts you can explain to them. If you've got a child that's scientifically minded, you can explain to them about the spiritual ecosystem, right? It's, it's, it's beautiful that we have the analogy and explain, uh, sorry, the, 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 the world ecosystem and, how, and that the same thing is we have a spiritual ecosystem, right? When, when we do good, there's, um, the, the Torah talks about the, uh, the war, right? When there was a war, uh, the Jewish people were fighting a war against Amalek, right? And Moses was standing there with his hands upright. And whenever his hands were upright, they, they won the war, right? When his hands dropped, they, 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 they started to lose the war. What does this mean? What, what, is, what, is, what is this story teaching us? The story is teaching us this exactly. It's teaching us that the war is always fought on two planes it's taught on a physical right and it's taught on the spiritual moses what and hands out hands down was not really what was controlling the world 
Moses' hands up was an analogy to that how the Jewish people were. Their understanding at that point was, um, was that everything relies on God. When they could direct themselves um, upwards, right? When they understood that what we do spiritually has an impact, right? When they understood, when we pray, right, that God is, is involved in this picture, that's when they were, were successful. When they forgot about it, when Moses' hands dropped and all it was is about what's happening down here, that's when they lost um, 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 their, their success. And it's the same thing here is that we, 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 um, we have to, we, we, we have to understand that it's being fought on two fronts and we have to teach that to our kids as well that life is always lived on two fronts it's the physical it's the spiritual it's the it's it's one of the fundamental understandings of judaism is that there's the physical world and the spiritual world and we as jews we bring the two together right so it's not like we, we don't do the physical and it's not like we don't do the spiritual and that is something that we can do concretely from abroad right that we could do kindness to others and that tips the scale and the spiritual scale. We could pray, and that has an impact. We have another question. Is it okay? Okay, so a very good question here is Is it okay to talk about this matter with other kids and explain to them to do mitzvahs and giving charity and helping out in a way that support Israel? Um, with our kids, right? That they said with our kids. So I would say, um, um, it's, I, 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 I believe it is important to talk to our children about this. It is important to have these difficult conversations with our kids. Two things though. Number one is is we do not do not be graphic with our children. Right? We we don't have to the for even for ourselves, the graphic videos, the pictures is is too much, right? Do not share those with your kids. Don't have to share the graphic parts with our kids, right? So you could tell them there's a wall, right? And you can and the second thing is is that we can frame it in again. We are going to be the helpers here. We are going to be the ones that are going to do good. We're going to pray. We're going to be there for our brothers and our sisters in, in, in their time of need. Okay, I'm going to take one more question. And then, and, then, um, um, and then if anyone wants to ask me any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out afterwards to it. So how must the traumatized people put this in context that everything comes from God, right? So I would say a couple of things to that. Firstly, if someone who else is traumatized, our job is to be with them, right? It's not to give the, it's not to, 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 right? If they come to us and they ask us these questions, we can, we can engage them with it, right? But it, and, and again, going back to the, the idea that, that during the trauma, it's different. Our response is different than, than post-trauma, right? During the trauma, we have, to, you know, we can acknowledge, we can be kind, we can be empathetic, we can support, etc. Ourselves and others. Post trauma is a time for for where we where we can get gain that perspective. And again, if anyone wants to hear more about it, you're more than welcome to listen to last week's episode on the on on the podcast. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to to reach out afterwards and if I can help any of you in any way please reach out I'm happy to to I'm here for you thank you